So now in this video we're going to look at an end channel enhancement mode MOSFET. We're going to wire it as a switch. And so end channel is a bit uh, more complicated. You can look that up. But uh, the uh, main thing is this is an enhancement mode MOSFET, which means that like the bipolar junction transistor, it does not want to conduct under uh, just normal circumstances. You have to give it a, a signal, in this case, for it to conduct. So we'll talk about that a little bit uh, more later. There's also depletion mode MOSFETs and channel or P-channel. And uh, But there's depletion mode and those want to conduct until you give it a signal to stop conducting. So that's the difference between those two. Main thing is though, if you have a part number that it tells you to use, use that part number. And uh, if you need a variation, you got to look up data sheets and see if the one you found will uh, substitute for it with your needs. But in uh, any case, here is the schematic diagram that I found in at least one data sheet right there. So the data sheets tend to have the more complex schematic diagram and there's also a lot of uh, different variations. So unfortunately, uh, good chance you have to know the part number to know which uh, even the type of transistor to use, unfortunately. So, in any case, this is the one that I like for N channel, and that's the one I like for P channel. So those are the ones I'll be using, but you may see that on uh, the schematic. So, this is a switch, and uh, it's very similar to the NPN bipolar junction transistor, except for we don't have to worry about gain at all. The uh, resistor here helps hold the gate off. So you can see there's a little space on the uh, schematic diagram and uh, that's pretty universal to have uh, that little space there. It is kind of like a capacitor. So you build up uh, or remove charges on one side and it does the opposite on the other, building up or removing charges. So with those extra charges or lesser charges depending on the particular transistor, it uh, starts conducting better or worse. So with this one, we give a positive charge, it helps make the other side a little more negative. And uh, so it's N channel, negative, that makes it conduct better. When we release the uh, switch, we give negative on that side, it makes it more positive in there. And based on the chemistry, that makes it less conductive. It'll turn off completely with uh, pulling that voltage down. So if we don't have this resistor, if the transistor is off, we press the button, we get that positive, that negative, it starts flowing. If we release the switch, this is gonna stay positive because it's like a capacitor. That negative, it's going to keep flowing. So you can't leave the input floating there. It's gonna stay in whatever state you last put it in for a really long time. So here we have it on the breadboard. We'll zoom in and take a little uh, better look. The uh, switch here, it, uh, this breadboard, these higher quality breadboards, they tend to not like these bigger pins. Kind of push the uh, switch out, but now it's getting a little more used to it. So in any case, this might even pop out. So that's something to be aware of. The cheaper boards, they seem to just kind of bend into shape right away and uh, not reject stuff as much, but then it's really stuck in that shape. It doesn't bounce back. So there, we could see it. We could see the current flow right there. Pretty straightforward. We have five volts. We'll zoom in to get a little better look. And so here is the transistor source at the bottom, gate in the middle, drain on top, because we got the flat side there. Always uh, double check with the data sheet if you haven't been using a component a whole lot. Uh, long lead anode to the resistor, short lead the cathode to the uh, drain. And then we have a 220 ohm resistor, which is what is limiting the current since this is a switch. So here we have our pull down resistor and we need that. So uh, actually we don't need to zoom back you'll just be able to see the uh, LED beyond. And uh, so I can even falsely trigger it with my finger there fully. And there you can see the build. And uh, so I was alternating current on there, more positive, more negative. And uh, so we stopped in a state where I was really conducting well and the switch conducts fully and it gets going there. So I get it somewhere like in between and it kind of stops whatever voltage I left it at at the time determining how well it conducts and uh, so again we put the resistor to positive it's going to stay on we got to go to negative to pull it down to uh, turn it off once we release the switch because as we saw without the pull down resistor you hit the switch it's going to stay in that state so a lot more uh, 
is explained if you study the component. I really recommend doing that. But uh, that's the basic principles for how it works. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting. Click like, subscribe, the bell, all that. Donate to Patreon if you can. That helps out the most. I have links down in the description. I'll see you in the next video.